I'm going to be going over the top three things that I would recommend web developers learn in 2019. These are all things that I really enjoyed learning and have gotten a ton of value out of them now that I use them on a regular basis. Now to start off, number one is Yarn Workspaces. This is something that helps you manage and install dependencies for a mono repo. So this is something where if you're not familiar with mono repos, instead of splitting up all the different projects that are within a project, you put them all into a single repo. So for example, in this project, I have a website, a server, and an app. So instead of creating a separate repository for each one, they're all bundled into a single one. So here we have an app, the server, and the website. And then I have these two extra packages. Controller is where I'm sharing code between the website and the app. And common is a package that I share code between the app, server, and website. So that's the biggest thing, is being able to share code easily between the different projects. And that one is huge. The other one is just configuration in general. Being able to share, for example, your prettier config or any kind of global things that you want to occur or affect all the packages and be consistent with, you can now only have one and it just simplifies kind of duplicate things across multiple projects, which I really like. And pretty much going forward, if I'm doing a project that includes multiple parts, I'm setting up a mono repo with it using Yarn Workspaces to install dependencies and it's gonna be fast that way. And it's just a really nice experience being able to share everything and not duplicate between packages. Now number two is TypeScript. Now this is, if you don't know, basically JavaScript and then types attached to it. Uh, and it's a separate language, or I guess it really calls itself a superset of JavaScript. Um, and what's interesting about TypeScript is it actually takes some upfront work to do it and actually add types to your JavaScript or add types when you're coding it, um, but then pays dividends going forward. Uh, you're just gonna be catching so many errors before you even run your code, which is huge. And personally, I'm just a sucker for auto-completion. You just get so much better auto-completion. I'm using VS Code as my editor and it works so well with TypeScript. And that's something you're probably like, what about Flow? What about ReasonML or all the other different variants. How come I'm not using those? Uh, I actually started with Flow and really one of the big reasons I'm using TypeScript over Flow is it just has way better integration with VS Code and the auto-completion is just so much better. Um, and then using this over JavaScript, it's huge catching those bugs before you even have to run your code and refactoring is so much easier. It's one of those things where even for small projects, I really like it. And then as your project scales, you're gonna be thanking yourself more and more when you've added TypeScript because it's gonna be so nice to be making these changes and be confident you're not breaking stuff all over the place. The other thing is TypeScript is just way more popular than Flow right now. Um, and it looks like TypeScript is pretty much the, the thing that people are choosing over Flow. And really the same thing over ReasonML, if you've heard of that. There's just, I really like ReasonML, it looks pretty sweet, but there's just not a community there yet. TypeScript, there's a ton of tooling being built around it, and more and more libraries are starting to support it, and pretty much any library that I use this day is compatible with TypeScript. A, very, a ton of them are compatible now. Um, and so that's really awesome to see. And then lastly, the last thing that I'm really liking is GraphQL. Now this is something that is great for giant companies and also for a single user or single developer and everyone in between. Um, if we take a look, tons of companies are starting to adopt this. This is the users of GraphQL now. And you're gonna notice some pretty big names in here. Um, and there's just a ton of logos now. It just goes on and on. Uh, and I think we're gonna see more and more companies starting to adopt this in the future. Uh, being able to set up a schema that is type safe uh, and making sure you know exactly what the response is going to be and having it so you have a whole documentation of your API is so nice and being able to just prevent uh, multiple requests right so now I don't have to make like five different requests from five different endpoints I'm doing a single request and getting the exact data that I need it's really nice to develop with and there's so much tooling being built around it 
if I'm a single developer, I've really been enjoying just developing it on my side project. And then also when I'm working on a team, it's really nice to use as well. And you're seeing tons of teams are starting to adopt it already. So those are the top three things that I would really recommend web developers to learn. But I'd love to hear what you guys think. Is there anything you've learned this year that you really liked and that would recommend to others?